We talk a lot about the richest people in the world and the richest men in the United States of America. What we surprisingly aren't talking about is a group of people who together control over $200 billion. I'm talking about the richest women in America. So who are these extremely wealthy women? Where did they get their billions of dollars? And why have you probably only heard about two of them? So again, in solidarity with girl bosses and boss ladies in the US, we're gonna be checking out the top five richest women in the United States. Number five, Miriam Adelson, $31 billion. Coming in hot at number five, we have the richest Israeli and the 44th richest person in the world. If you've ever had a gin-soaked weekend in Vegas playing the slots, hitting the tables, and making uh, irreparable mistakes, you've probably made Miriam a little bit richer thanks to her massive stake in Las Vegas Sands. Miriam Adelson was born in Tel Aviv in 1945 to parents who fled from Poland. She's accomplished quite a lot in her long life. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology and Genetics, as well as a medical degree from Tel Aviv University. She served mandatory army service as a medical officer. She worked as a physician for a while, and in 1993, she founded a substance abuse center and research clinic in the end. It turns out being a doctor wasn't the lucrative endeavor that would land her the fifth richest woman in the United States. Miriam Adelson married Ariel Oakshorn, a fellow physician, with whom she had two children. She later divorced him in the 80s, eventually meeting and marrying the late billionaire Sheldon Adelson. A marriage strong enough to land her on King Luxury, not once, but twice. Sheldon Adelson was the former CEO and chairman of Las Vegas Sands, an American casino and resort company worth $28.7 billion. Sheldon purchased the company back in 1988, and he transformed it into the cross-continental, multinational giant it is today, with branches from the United States to China. Sheldon Adelson held a substantial amount of stock in Las Vegas Sands and by the time of his death, he was worth $36.4 billion and was one of the wealthiest people in America. After his death at the age of 87, he left more than half of his $48 billion gambling empire to his wife Miriam. She now owns 56% of the stake in Las Vegas Sands. Miriam has been a major political player in the United States for several years now, quite vocally too, donating tens of millions of dollars to political candidates she supports. She was even awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2016, presumably because of all the freedom you get when you gamble your life savings. Number 4. Jacqueline Mars $33.3 .3 billion Next up, we have the patron saint of Valentine's Day, period cramps, and broken hearts. The 39th richest person in the world and the richest person in the world with a candy named after her. Remember that time you forgot it was your anniversary and you quickly bought a bunch of chocolate to hide it? Well, you might not have known it, but you made Jacqueline Mars a few dollars richer. That's because Jacqueline and her brother John each own an estimated one-third of Mars Incorporated. Yes, Mars, like the candy bar. Or should I say candy bars? This $40 billion candy company is responsible for some of the most popular chocolates you reflexively buy at the supermarket, like M&Ms, Snickers, Twix, Skittles, and of course, Mars. They also make pet food and provide animal care services, presumably for the many dogs that mistakenly eat their chocolates. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called cornering the market. So who exactly is Jacqueline Mars? Well, she's an American investor, heiress of the world's largest candy maker, Mars Incorporated. She was born to the wealthy Mars family in Washington, D.C., and received a prestigious education, attending one of the first girls boarding schools in New England, Miss Hall's school in Pittsfield, after which she attended Bryn Mawr College, where she graduated with a degree in anthropology. She eventually joined the Mars Company, founded by her grandfather, Frank C. Mars, in 1911. Jacqueline worked for the company for nearly 20 years as a food group president until 2001, after which she was on the board till 2016. Under her supervision, Mars has covered pretty much every aisle of edibles in the supermarket with its wide range of popular products. Mars was responsible for Combo's crackers, Dolmio pasta sauce, or 
four-bit gum, Uncle Ben's rice, and stuff humans probably shouldn't eat, like pedigree pet food. Did I mention that Mars Inc. also trained horses for the Olympics? That one might have solely been Jacqueline's idea, though. She loves horses, occasionally appears at equestrian events, and donates money to the U.S. Equestrian Team Foundation's Jacqueline B. Mars Competition and Training Grant, which helps train horse riders. Jacqueline has been married twice. Her first marriage resulted in the birth of their three children, Alexandra Badger, Stephen Badger, and Krista Badger. Personally, I don't know how she resists the urge to open a giant chocolate factory and hide golden tickets. Number 3. Julia Koch $53 billion. Next up, we have the 24th richest billionaire in the world, a member of one of the richest families in America and widow to the late David Koch. Julia was born in 1962. She spent her early childhood in Iowa farming and working for her parents' furniture store. In the 1980s, she moved to New York and worked as an assistant to fashion designer Adolfo. Julia met David Koch on a blind date in 1991, and like most blind dates, it went pretty terribly. However, just like the massage you get after a bunch of failed dates, this story has a happy ending. The two met again a year later at a party and started dating, eventually getting married in 1996. Julia and David Koch spent years living in an apartment on Fifth Avenue, but in 2004, they moved to the legendary 740 Park Avenue in Manhattan, a home that has been and is still regarded as the most luxurious and significant residential building in New York City. Don't just take my word for it. The building has had books and even a documentary made about it. It housed wealthy Americans like John D. Rockefeller, the richest man in Egypt, Nassif Sawiris. Even the French government purchased a home there for its ambassador. After David Koch's death in 2019, Julia and their three children David Jr., Mary Julia, and John Mark inherited 42% of Koch Industries. David Koch was the seventh richest person in the world before his death, and he had a net worth of $53.5 billion. As a result of this, Julia was catapulted onto the list of the top 10 richest women in the world. She currently sits on the board of directors of Coke Industries, America's second largest company by revenue, and sixth largest in the entire world, raking in a yearly revenue of $115 billion. Coke Industries doesn't get all that money by just drilling oil either. They've acquired so many companies and subsidiaries, they pretty much do everything now. With acquisitions like the $22.5 billion dollar purchase of Georgia Pacific, one of the world's largest manufacturers and distributors of paper, providing products under popular names like Brawny and Vanity Fair, and purchasing Molex Electrical Components Manufacturer for $7.5 billion. Julia is set to climb the list of richest people in the world pretty quickly. She isn't all business, though. Julia is currently president of the David H. Koch Foundation, a charitable foundation that has given nearly $200 million to support diverse causes nationwide, including science and medical research, education, the arts, and more. Number 2. Mackenzie Scott – $62.2 billion Next, we have the 28th richest billionaire in the world, Mackenzie Scott, formerly Mackenzie Bezos. In case you were wondering where you've seen that face before, Mackenzie might be popular for her marriage to the formerly richest person in the world, Jeff Bezos, or more likely, her divorce from him. But she has lived a rather interesting life. She was born in California in 1970 and was stung by the writing bug at a very young age. She claims to have started writing seriously from age six, the same age you were still learning not to write on your own face. Mackenzie doesn't just post raunchy fanfics on the internet either. She's an honest-to-goodness novelist. She wrote her debut novel, The Testing of Luther Albright, in 2005, and it won her an American Book Award and she published a second novel back in 2013. Mackenzie was all set for a career in literature after earning her bachelor's degree in English at Princeton University, where she studied under Nobel laureate Toni Morrison. However, she ended up making her billions in a slightly different way. In 1993, Mackenzie Scott married Jeff Bezos. They both moved to Seattle and started Amazon. She was one of Amazon's first employees and was heavily involved in Amazon's early days and development. She worked on the company's name, business plan, accounts, and shipping early orders. She even negotiated the company's first freight contract. All in all, 
she was a damn fine employee, and that $35 billion paycheck was a couple decades too late. Speaking of which, their marriage lasted from 1993 to 2019. As part of the divorce settlement, Bezos transferred 25% of his Amazon stake to McKenzie, which was about 4% of the company. This left her with $35.6 billion, making her the third wealthiest woman in the world. After her gargantuan divorce settlement, McKenzie became a signatory to the Giving Pledge, a campaign started by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett to encourage extremely wealthy people to contribute a majority of their wealth to philanthropic causes. Like most billionaires on the pledge list, though, despite her valiant efforts to give away at least half her wealth to charity, already giving away a whopping $2.8 billion worth of charitable gifts in 2020 alone, her net worth had shot up to $62.2 billion by the end of 2021. Number 1. Alice Walton $66.4 billion And finally, we have the richest woman woman in the United States of America. She's the 19th richest billionaire in the world and is also part of the richest family in America, the Waltons. Alice was born in 1949 in Newport, Arkansas, and was raised along with her three brothers, Rob, John, and Jim, by her father, Sam Walton. Her father founded Walmart in 1962, and over the decades, it grew into the world's largest company by revenue, earning over $540 billion. As you can imagine, being the heiress to the founder of Walmart can be quite lucrative. In fact, the entire Walton family is worth a pretty penny. $169.7 billion worth of pretty pennies to be exact. Turns out, Walmart is more than just great deals and funny memes. It has a net worth larger than the GDP of quite a few countries. There are approximately 10,500 Walmart stores in 27 countries worldwide, and it employs about 2.2 million people and serves approximately 220 million customers every week. And a large amount of that shopping empire is owned and controlled by Alice Walton. Throughout her life, Alice has refused the allure of working for Walmart like her brothers, instead choosing to pursue her passions. She has worked as an equity analyst, money manager, and broker at multiple reputable financial institutions. She founded an investment bank, where she was the president, chairwoman, and CEO. Hashtag girlboss. In the late 90s, her company closed down, and like something out of a soap opera, she moved to a ranch in Texas and started raising horses, presumably to get her groove back. Despite being an avid horse lover, she sold the ranch in 2015 and moved to Fort Worth, where she would spend her time curating art at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, the art museum she just casually founded. Turns out, you can really chase your dreams when you have a lot of money. Who knew? These are the richest women in the United States. So how many of them did you already know? Be honest. And if you enjoyed this video, which of course you did, click on the video on the screen. We've got more where that came from.